I, I have to say that because of my friend Tom Riley uh, two years ago sitting in Pacifica restaurant on his iPod, I think iPhone, I think you were one of the first people to have an iPhone, I saw photographs of William's work and it just, I don't think there's a week that goes by that I don't think about him and, and what he has accomplished. It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, and Brian Mueller is going to help us if I guess we need your help in terms of uh, translation or something. So, um, you come from a farming village. Uh, what do you grow and how did the famine affect your family? Um, yeah, I come from the country where we depend on farming most of the time. Uh, we grow corn and tobacco. Um, in, 2000, in 2002, it's when the uh, big famine hit Malawi, and uh, a lot of people, more than like uh, 10,000 people died of that famine, and uh, my family was uh, badly affected for that famine. Um, instead of like uh, the money which they were finding that time, like uh, to pay me a school fees, they were like forced to buy, uh, to buy food. Uh, we are like uh, eating like uh, normal, um, normal la 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 like normal food every day, like uh, uh, lunch and dinner. And then after the third like uh, my dad decided like uh, to change to one meal a day to make it like uh, the little food we had like to sustain up to the next growing season. Uh, but it didn't sustain to the next season, and he, he tried several ways to. To make like it, to make it happen, so that we can survive. Hmm. What is the hungry season? What is the hungry season? Oh, um, hungry season. It's like every year in Malawi, like starting like February up to the beginning of May. Uh, people running out of food because we we depend on like uh, maize as our uh, main food. And what happened? It's like we we harvest maize in May up to up next is harvesting it was also like next in May. So there's like long way to another uh, harvesting season. So in the way like in the um, February up to March to beginning of May, people running out of food. But this this season this year like a uh, hungry season it's like a, there's like hungry but he, the good thing is that there's like a government has like a organization which sells mess. Uh, it's like it sells mess. But when like in 2002, when the hunger uh, hit Malawi, there was no like food in the uh, government's um, uh, uh, places where they sell food because the all supplies mess which we had like the government was forced by IMF to, to sell it because it was like difficult to keep the the maize and also they told them to to like to pay some debts but because of like some uh, I think like uh, corrupt readers they, instead of like uh, using like uh, why is the, the money which they get from selling those maize they just like spending in other things that the, uh, the country will see are affected. Brian do you want to say something? Yeah I was just going to clarify that uh, anyway. um, yeah the hungry season. You probably hold it to your mouth. Yeah the hungry the hungry season um, Everybody in Malawi are sustenance farmers, and they live uh, by their crops each year. And so, what he's saying is that um, uh, they they, year, they live by this one crop um, all year long. And so, um, usually this runs out about in February. They don't harvest again until May. So there's this large gap uh, that exists uh, between that time that silos run run dry, and um, it's during this time. It's also the rainy season in Malawi, and um, cholera is a problem as well because. Uh, the bodies are weak, and it's also a time uh, when everybody's out trying to plant uh, their next harvest, so they're working the hardest of all year long with the least amount of food. And during that famine in 2002, um, uh, everybody ran out of food, and there was no surplus to rely on, and so uh, tens of thousands started to die. And on top of that, cholera swept through, and um, it was a pretty grim situation in Williams Village. And uh, so it was. Um, well, you're obviously an inventor. Tell us about your toy pinwheels. Um, uh, my toy uh, pinwheels, like, um, when I was like, uh, growing up, when I was much younger, I, was, like, I used to, uh, to play with uh, uh, the pinwheels like, all the time, like 
it was like one of uh, my toys which I used to, to play with. So I had like this idea of like uh, seeing it when I'm uh, pointing where the wind is coming, it was rotating and then uh, afterwards, see, after the, the theme and when I was like going to, to the library to read books, it's when I get like some ideas about um, uh, about like uh, bicycle dynamos. Bicycle dynamos are... What like, is that? Bicycle dynamos. Oh, oh bi bicycle dynamos. Yeah, are like small generators which generate electricity on bike to, to make like a headlamp of the bicycle when you are riding it. I had like an idea of those things. And later on when I saw the pictures of the windmill on the on the book and then I connected together with the... You mean when you saw the windmill on the cover of the Using Energy book? Yeah. I connected the idea of the electromagnetic or on the um, physics book of the, the physics book from the UK, uh, which talks about the dynamos, and then I connected together with the picture of the wind, which I saw in the book, and also the the small a small fan which I was making when I was young. After connecting those together, then I I was like, yeah, I think maybe. I can make something out of this thing. Um, but before I like, decided to make a windmill to generate electricity, uh, the main idea of the windmill, I was like planning to to make a, a windmill maybe to pump water. Because in the book they say that windmill are used to pump water and generate electricity. And I thought that if I can make one to pump water, then we're going to be growing like food like twice a, twice a year. And then my family maybe will no longer go like uh, female again, like the hand or like we solve that problem. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah just to, to um, brag on a bit. But um, in, in these books that he had, the first one was a, a one called Explaining Physics, a British physics book. And William did not read English uh, really at all. Um, he, uh, this book had incredible diagrams and illustrations in it that illustrated electromagnetism and, you know, circuits and switches and stuff like that. And um, just William basically memorized these diagrams and would see, uh, say, figure it would be figure ten, um, for instance. And so he would look at the text and uh, and, work, and, and find where it said figure ten in the text, and he would learn English around those that, that those sentences. Incredible. And, um, and and basically taught himself electromagnetism uh, in that way. <laughs> some of the materials you used and what were some of the challenges that you faced? Um, most of the material which I used, I get them from the uh, junkyard. Um, like enough, at my former secondary school, before it was a secondary school, it was like, it used to be um, a graduate for a certain tobacco uh, estate. And then when they left, they just left uh, some parts of uh, tractor, uh, even like parts of uh, um, um, uh, water pump engines, uh, motor, um, motor bike, things like that, and then I went there to look for the materials. Uh, but the challenges of that, it was next to my school, and some of my, my friends, my classmates, would be seeing me like uh, wandering around at the jump yard, and then they would say, like, pointing a finger at me like maybe I was like maybe smoking my one and then I don't know what I'm saying now. I'm going crazy. Like even <laughs> even my even my my um, my parents they didn't spot the idea the first time. They'll say like ah, I think your friends they don't do like such things maybe there's something going on in your head. Like <laughs> yeah. And how did your windmill change life in the village? Um, well uh, the women has changed uh, uh, life of my uh, my village a lot. Even like I'll start with like my my family. After I made that first win, I was able to power like light bulbs. And uh, by then we are using before the wind we were using kerosene lamp, which was causing some many problems. Like uh, smoke from the kerosene lamp was causing like uh, coughing, and also it was also like expensive for my parents to buy it all the time. And after the windmill, they were like, I was like able to use the windmill to for the light bulbs and also for the radio. And later on, after some journalists came, and then I was like, uh, kind of like discovered, and people know know me like here in the states. They have like they came to help uh, 
uh, with like uh, adding from the wind, which I had like uh, helping with the, um, um, uh, solar panel, solar panels to add on that, so that we can have like hybrid system when there's low, when there's no wind, then there's like sun and power is working. When there's no, um, when there's no wind, then uh, solar it will be working. Things like that, and also they also helped with like uh, funding, like drilling a, a bore. Funding like what? Helping with like drilling a bore. Drilling a bore. Okay. Yeah, a bore which like uh, we store a, a solar pump, a solar water pump, which pumps water from the from the ground up to the tanks, which like is like helping people, <coughs> like people are drinking water from the from the tap like he also people like the same way people does in the urban areas it's just like the same they are drinking clean water they are no longer like traveling long distances to fish water and what's the green machine um uh, in green, your mother's garden yeah green machine is like a a new women which like you have just like made it's like it's like i can say in short it's 21 it's there's like a, a place where I, I put like a generator to generate electricity. At the same time, it also like pumps water to to power like to to irrigate my mom's garden. The, she does grow like a vegetable all all year longer. Like some of the vegetables we eat, and some of them we do like sell for the like to buy some other things at the farm. Yeah. Incredible. And in addition to that, um, you go to school and you're an author. Uh, with Brian Mueller here, you have co-authored a book, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, which will be published in September. Sounds like Christmas presents for everybody. <laughs> yeah. What inspired you to write a book for us? For the world, really. What's the message in in your book? Uh, well, uh, I noticed that uh, there's like a uh, lot of like uh, talented young young people, even like uh, or other older people out there. But uh, maybe because of like uh, their like lack of encouragement, maybe if uh, like they can hear like uh, like uh, my story, I can share my, my story, then they can be also encouraged on whatever they are doing, maybe to come up with uh, different ideas then uh, to change the world as well. And who encouraged you? Um, um, I was like a, um, um, a encouraged by like a, um, my family and also like a, uh, other people um, to uh, come up with the, uh, like the book. Yeah. Thank you so much, William. Thank you.